uh, uh, let's uh, let me share my screen to see that. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Good. Uh, so the um, my my talk is about uh, um, kind of introduction of uh, of the way that we are using um, different privacy in uh, improving AI in some areas of AI. Uh, so as, as Said said, I, I moved from uh, Deakin University. I see a lot of people that I know in, in, in here. So I moved to uh, UTS from Deakin two, more than two years ago and uh, has become their head of school in here. Uh, Okay, uh, here's a roadmap, what I'm going to talk about, uh, a little bit a uh, background in AI, and uh, then the privacy and security challenges in AI that uh, we all probably, many of us know uh, uh, a little bit. And uh, then uh, I will talk about a particular tool that we have been using for many years now, uh, it's a differential privacy, and then we will concentrate on the, on the, on the fourth point, which is the, uh, application of different privacy in improving AI uh, uh, in, in some, some technology, some areas, then I will do a little bit of conclusion, okay. Uh, so this, this work is um, based on um, these recent uh, publications that we have. Uh, mainly is the first one, uh, this presentation, mainly the first one that we have a survey paper just published or uh, accepted in uh, TKDE, and uh, the it's, it's, it's same title as more than privacy, applying different privacy in key areas of AI. And uh, also a number of uh, papers that detailed technologies that we actually, or methodologies that we use, uh, DP, uh, different privacy in, in improving AI operations, uh, improving their privacy, uh, improving their security and so on and so forth, uh, improving their fairness. So those are the papers that just uh, accepted for publication in uh, uh, transactions on cyber cybernetics, uh, transaction on the uh, knowledge and data engineering, and the one uh, is already published um, on, uh, published online, and uh, it's sort of published in 2021, but already got all the details of publications. So those are the, uh, the in, in tips. So those are the um, papers that uh, I am going to mention a little bit about it, but I won't go into the details of each of them. Uh, so I, but I will only do a little bit uh, introduction of them. Uh, if you are interested in the details, here are the uh, URL you can go into and access the details, but I can answer questions if you want at a later uh, time. So let's look at it, some backgrounds in AI. I, I, I think many of you have been working in AI for quite a long time. And I know so it's been working in, in intelligence right from beginning. So you are really expert in AI, much more uh, knowledgeable than, than I do. Uh, but uh, from my understanding of AI is that um, uh, there's lots of those different technologies in, um, in AI in machine learning, deep learning, multi-agent systems, uh, from the uh, application, you can see robotics that, uh, um, that uh, uh, site is an expert in there's my computer vision as well, uh, uh, MPL, NLP, those sort of things. Uh, and uh, of course, deep learning was part of the machine learning, but now become kind of uh, area of its own because of these uh, new technologies we recently uh, see. So I put that as a separate uh, area in deep learning. So security in AI, we've been seeing a lot of this uh, quite of hypes about it. Uh, that uh, here's a clip from the movie that the, the fate of the uh, fears that uh, shows how a malicious user uh, controls a autonomous car that can um, you know, do a lot of harmful things. So that's really, um, that's a future, but it's, it can be done uh, if we are seeing the, the uh, more autonomous cars in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in action. Also, um, there's security AI as well that uh, people are using a lot of those uh, online applications uh, that, uh, that uh, are 
uh, personal information can easily be uh, leaked from those, those places. Uh, that's sort of the training data, all those, uh, those uh, uh, things can be collected and then can be leaked from those things. So, uh, and uh, through those AI uh, tools and fake um, face is another one that's a lot of this also security in, in, in this, uh, this uh, uh, machine learning uh, deep learning adversary attack that we have seen a lot of these things that uh, uh, that using some adversary uh, noises adding into the um, into the the, the 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 pictures then that can be recognized as, as a different uh, sign uh, which is very very critical for uh, autonomous driving uh, and and uh, uh, those sort of uh, controls and uh, this is also uh, seeing that uh, a, a very uh, public long example that uh, by adding some noises that you can have you the, the machine can um, can recognize that as a different uh, thing instead of the originally that we would like to see that uh, original image is car but uh, with this noise put in uh, that will be changed into uh, a different one that, like a toast or something like that. So that's, uh, that's the, um, you can fool uh, deep learning models, uh, computer vision models by putting in some attacks. Uh, so, 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 so that could happen. So there's a number of the security challenges uh, in, um, in AI. So for example, the one is that how do we avoid those malicious uh, uh, component uh, or agents uh, in our AI system, especially when we automate this, uh, those uh, things. And also how to we preserve those users' privacy uh, in machine learning. We know the machine learning is that we go out to dig up, dig out a lot of those uh, hidden features from the sea of uh, information but for privacy preserving, that means we want to keep those information, some of this private information that as much as possible that you can't uncover them. So that's sort of a um, contradictory uh, or conflict uh, uh, um, goals in here. And, but how do we do it? How do we balance that? And also another is how do we get, guarantee some kind of performance of machine learning models uh, with this, um, um, in consideration of the malicious agents, in consideration of this privacy and the security considerations. So, so there are lots of those, uh, those challenges that we need to understand when we apply AI in many, many areas. Uh, there are a number of possible um, solutions. Obviously, cryptography is one that we can see, and uh, that, but there's lots of those difficulties using uh, crypto as well. But I, I won't go into the details of using crypto, but one thing that we have been using to answer these challenges is from uh, differential privacy. So what is different privacy? That it's, it's kind of a principle is that uh, this, if an individual is in or out of a data set, should be of making di little difference of the analytical output of the result. So that's sort of a, a definition of DP. So um, if an individual is in there or not in there, it's not really a diff uh, uh, big issue. So for example, we have two data, data sets. One is D, original data set, one is D prime. Uh, then the only difference between these two data sets is that Xn, is not in D prime, but it's in D. Uh, is in D. So um, then we call them as neighboring data sets. That's only one record's difference. Then we say this by using machine learning methods or using different methods, whatever method you learn from the data sets, you access it, you query to it, then you got an output. Why is the output uh, as another is also as prime, whatever. And then uh, if we see and uh, the output has of those two different queries have little difference. And the adversaries cannot tell if I am accessing D or I'm accessing D prime, then that means uh, if 
Xn is inside or outside of this data set um, is, you cannot find it out. Okay, so there's no difference between that, uh, the, uh, that, that, uh, that two data sets. So uh, the Xn situation is safe. So this is the principle of differential privacy and we have been using that for, for many, many applications. So how do we define this, uh, these things? Different privacy, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's defined as such uh, formally that you have the mechanism that you use to, uh, to, to aid in some noises uh, as M and you have an accident that's called a, um, that's called a budget, uh, a privacy budget. And then if we also will have two data sets and uh, then um, that's the, the output of this, um, that's, that's the D, D and the D prime are within the boundary of these two uh, uh, real numbers. Then we say that uh, this is uh, different privacy is uh, within this uh, mechanism with epsilon uh, different privacy. So that's the way we, we call it uh, epsilon as privacy budget or the code mechanism as the, the M as the different privacy mechanism. And uh, then the, the, the boundary is, the, um, the, is shown here. So that's, uh, then there's, there's, uh, there's the, the definition is achieved by uh, through this sort of uh, um, um, two things, through this, uh, this kind of uh, privacy level, uh, putting the privacy budget and also um, um, looking, by looking at the uh, sensitivity. So um, if we look at these things, is that uh, the, the something in between is called the, um, the sensitivity and uh, then that privacy budget is the one that we, how much uh, privacy that we can, we can keep in there. So um, generally speaking, there are many, many different uh, uh, mechanisms that you can use, but most, the two most um, uh, famous one are the Laplace mechanism that is mainly used for numerical outputs. So for example, how many people in this room have blue eyes, that sort of query. And then you use Laplace uh, mechanism that can easily uh, implement uh, differential privacy. Another is exponential mechanism that is very suitable for non-numerical output. For example, we ask question like, uh, who, uh, what is the most common eye colors in this room? So that's, uh, that's we don't have a numerical answer, but we have some kind of uh, non-numerical output. So in that case, we use exponential privacy, uh, this, uh, this mechanism. But there are many other mechanisms that people use, uh, the, but those two are the most uh, common ones. Different privacy has been used in many, many places. Uh, most famous one is that uh, Apple's uh, uh, IS, uh, this, this IS, uh, iOS, uh, that's use um, this different privacy for um, this emoji uh, promote uh, this uh, uh, prompt of of uh, some kind of recommendations of of the type when you type the, a, a word or type in something they recommend something for you but they use the collected information but use different privacy to make sure that individuals privacy is kept so that's been used in some places uh, that's uh, like lo location privacy as well. Uh, so a number of things, but different privacy. The, the topic that I'm going to talk about today is that different privacy has much more nice properties than just privacy preserving. So there are, if we look at that, so there's actually a number of this uh, properties. The first one, obviously, that you can use for um, private uh, preserving privacies. That's been um, that's been the, the original or uh, purpose of this private different privacy. That means we hide any individual's information in that aggregating information. Then we can preserve these uh, individuals in these uh, data sets. However, there are many other things like stability. Uh, you can you can you can see that DP mechanism can ensure that the uh, output of any of this probability that's of an, any of this learning algorithm uh, is unchanged by modifying of some individual's record in the training data set, then the output is, is stable. 
So if you change a little bit about the individual's record in the learning set, then it can be stable. So that means uh, people cannot infer to the training data set of, uh, of uh, one or two of the individuals if they are in, included in the training set or not, uh, if we can implement that. Security, that we can also use um, those, uh, the DP to reduce the impact of this malicious participant in the AI task. For example, in the, in the, in the multi-agent system, if one agent was captured by your enemy, and then that can do a lot of malicious things in the whole system. Uh, but if we use DP, then we can actually uh, ignore or we can reduce the impact of a malicious um, agent to our uh, AI tasks. Fairness is another one in, uh, in, in this. Uh, um, so that uh, we don't, we can, in, we can actually ignore or reduce the um, biases uh, in, in, our, in our results, in learning results, uh, especially some kind of um, like, for example, um, that's for, for, for race or for gender, because of historical data we collected has a lot of bias uh, uh, embedded with it. For example, uh, certain race has re over representative in prison, right? So then you learning data, you have some output that significantly uh, highlights that sort of different uh, uh, particular race. Then that is not right in the fair, this part, but we can aid in this, uh, this noise is adding this uh, using different privacy, we can make the machine learning output much more fair. Composition is another one that can guarantee this, any step in this, uh, this, uh, this can, by satisfying this different privacy, we can have a good algorithm that satisfy uh, many different things. Um, so we will see that uh, later on. So there's kind of this, those, properties haven't been used largely or widely in many AI applications. This is what we're in our group. Uh, this is mainly uh, some of the tasks of our teach students are doing and we have been publishing uh, a number of papers and then still uh, and, and more papers, probably about 10 or so papers are in the pipeline of, uh, of uh, review currently. So that's a, so that's a, for example, this uh, one of this uh, this um, uh, in um, that's the, the Cynthia is the main um, advocate in uh, inventor of this uh, digital privacy. She published a paper in Science in 2015, talking about fairness of uh, of this um, uh, of this uh, this uh, this uh, and data analytics and by using um, this sort of uh, DP in different stages of machine learning, then you can reduce a lot of those biases. For example, you can put in, uh, in, in, the, in the training data, uh, that then you can achieve fairness. If you put a loss into, the, um, into machine learning that you can improve the, uh, in, into the, um, uh, into the uh, into the data set, so you can improve in this uh, uh, learning model. You can also put the noises in the output, and you can have this um, avoidance or fitting of the learning algorithm, and many other things that we also um, look at some multi-agent systems later on. I will, I will talk about details. So there are um, some some areas is quite interesting. Basically, if we look at the um, uh, literatures in the past we can see there's a number of areas that have, have been using DP in, um, in, 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 in AI. For example, in machine learning, you can have private learning, you can have stability in learning, you can have fairness in learning, that you can um, do a lot of those different things. And, uh, and also in deep learning, you can put this uh, DP in deep learning, distributed deep learning, uh, federated learning uh, as well, so then you can you can keep a lot of these things, achieve some of this uh, those uh, 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 properties. In multi-agent systems, 
you can use that for uh, using DP in uh, reinforced learning, auction, game theory, and uh, you can achieve some of this um, um, properties as well. So it's quite interesting. There's a lot of literatures have been doing this sort of uh, using DP in a number of AI uh, areas, uh, quite interestingly. Now let's look at a few of these examples of how do we apply DP in selected areas. One is that uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning, okay? So one, one thing that we can do is to do so-called private machine learning. When we learn machine, when you use machine learning, normally you can discover many private information as well. And you don't want this to sort of private information to be uncovered. So that we can actually put in those two conflict goals together by using differential privacy here that we can guarantee the output of the machine learning is, has satisfactory results, but we also can keep the private information uh, within ourselves. That's not being uh, uh, part of the, the output. So um, that's, uh, we, we had a paper um, in two years ago about that. That's quite interesting that uh, in so-called different privacy data publishing and, uh, and uh, analysis. Also, you can see that uh, sta uh, stable machine learning that just, uh, as I've just mentioned, that you can use, um, that's, uh, that's, uh, you can use this training data to include or not include some of the data inside here, but the output is the same. So that means you can see that it's stable, but um, private information is also uh, kept safe. Uh, fairness, as I mentioned before, that you can use that, um, that uh, different privacy, put the noises into there to make sure that um, um, achieve this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, fairness um, by ignore those, those uh, uh, past biases uh, that you, you could have. So, and also you can have this uh, resample, this uh, universal data set to um, avoid the biases by using DP there. Deep learning is also a quite interesting thing uh, that you can use um, DP in many uh, places. Uh, we'll, we'll see that later on, um, that's, uh, there's a number of at attacks in here, right? You can have membership attacks in the, um, in the infer uh, inf inference attacks that uh, you see if a given uh, a, a given record is in or not in the training data set that you can actually find it out if we don't use this machine learning or this, we don't use this DP method, but we can avoid that. Uh, and and if also attribute uh, attack that you use this non-sensitive attribute, uh, look at that, but you can learn some hidden sensitive attributes from the data sets, uh, from the test, different tests. But if you use DP in different areas, in actually in the five different areas of deep learning, you can avoid uh, all uh, of those attacks. So for example, you can use ADP data in the data sets, you can actually um, avoid this, this uh, defend against attribute infer inference attacks. And uh, then uh, you can achieve some kind of a uh, uh, very strong uh, privacy guarantee, but of course, there's a lot of impact to performance. This is another thing that we need to um, understand. Or in, you use, if you use your, um, your DP in a loss function, and uh, then uh, you, can, you can actually uh, achieve membership inference attack to, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, guarantee or to, to safeguard this, uh, this uh, defense against this membership inference attack. And then you can have very strong uh, privacy guarantee and uh, with very no um, uh, performance impact. You can have, you can put this DP in gradient and uh, then you see that uh, the, um, that you can achieve membership inference attacks at guarantee. And also uh, with those, uh, you can put in the weights, uh, you can put in the uh, classes uh, that's, you can achieve, if we put it in classes and weights, you can achieve 
the defense against both type of attacks, uh, but there's some impact to the performance, of course. Uh, it's quite interesting, there's lots of papers on those uh, topics of uh, uh, defense against uh, those different attacks in uh, deep neural networks. We can also use different privacy in distributed deep learning. Um, we, we, we've been seeing this, uh, this uh, federated learning has been, uh, in, in, been a hot topic in the past as well. So that's, you can put, uh, by using, by put this uh, AD noise in the data sets, uh, you can achieve some kind of uh, uh, privacy, uh, some kind of uh, uh, um, defense against this, this, uh, this uh, tools uh, in, 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 in the, uh, in the federation learning, you can put that in the loss function, gradients, weights, and many of the things. You can actually achieve a lot of the good things in uh, machine learning, in the, in the um, distributed deep learning or federated learning. One, another example I would like to um, put uh, a little bit more uh, of my energy in is the privacy, uh, deeper, uh, different privacy in multi-agent systems. Uh, this, Multi-agent system, we know that, uh, that um, um, is, is the kind of system that you have the agent here that observes environment, and then you can have, a, the, the, that can do a lot of reasoning, and then you have some actions uh, into this, uh, this sort of uh, environment. This sort of agent, intelligent agent system that can observe this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this environment, and uh, making some reasoning and then react to the changes of the environment. This sort of things that we, we refer to uh, intelligent agent. There, there's many of these examples not like uh, autonomous driving uh, vehicles that uh, is there and uh, playing uh, soccer balls, uh, there's sensor networks, uh, there's a grid, there's a lot of many different uh, applications of uh, um, intelligent agents. Uh, th there's, of course, if some agents are acting as malicious one, or the agents are captured by your enemy and are doing some malicious things, then there's lots of this impact to it, right? You can have collusions of cars, you can have blackouts of, uh, of the cities. So it's quite serious issues. So, so if another, if you look at another example, that, that this example is that we use a very simple example in our toy example in our uh, papers, is about this uh, kind of sensor networks. That, for example, normally if 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 I am um, the sensor one plans to send a uh, my sensors my sensed data into the base station, and uh, normally I go through uh, I forward that into um, uh, into sensor two, and then, then then forward that to the base. But if sensor two has been captured by your enemy and is acting as maliciously, obviously you can't send, you send it to, then this advice to you is that you don't send to me uh, because of all, all uh, I, I observe all you sent to uh, three instead of sent to four. So if you send to three, then you're just dead. You can't do anything, right? So uh, the ob obviously it's best is to send to four and then you go to five and it's good best. So that's sort of uh, malicious sensors can do a lot of this uh, false advice to, to uh, hamper your action. So that's sort of things. So how do we avoid this kind of uh, malicious agents in the sensor networks? This sort of uh, uh, action is, is the one that we are, we are trying to do. What we are trying to do is to look at this uh, using DP, different to privacy. You know, one of the pro one of the um, uh, one of the the uh, properties of DP is that DP can guarantee that a malicious record, a malicious agent, is in or out of the system, makes little difference, little impact on the overall utility of our system. So if we have, if we look at this, this as, as uh, uh, records, right, then we'll go through the DP and then we have utility U 
And this one with a malicious agent here that we also go through the DP and then we have a utility U prime. And if these two are very small, the difference of these two are very small, you can neglect, uh, neglect the, the, uh, this, uh, this, ignore the, the output of this difference, then we achieve our result. So that means we actually convert this sort of uh, sensor networks into records of the database that then we convert that into uh, using the multi, uh, using DP into this uh, sensor networks then we can achieve the output as we wish. So the malicious agent is in or out of this data set or out of this, this uh, uh, sensor networks multi-agent system can, can make no difference. So that's the one that we, we use. We have a lot of this uh, mathematical details of it, but I won't go into the details. That, of course, can be used in many, many areas. One is to military, of course. We can see that in the battlefield, some of your sensors could be captured by your enemy, right? They can make some false recommendations, false um, advices. And uh, if we can use DP to actually ignore or to, to guarantee the full output, the, the whole output that we can make our vectory, then we, we can ignore the, 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 this sort of uh, enemies, uh, that's uh, this sort of uh, malicious agent that will be captured by enemies. So that's sort of things that uh, you could use that, of course. And uh, lots of internet of things, uh, applications, we know that uh, there's a lot, lots of devices on the world, in the world that, that, that can provide us with information we see of information, but some of these agents could be, or devices could be uh, captured by adversaries and they can make some malicious um, uh, adv advices. Then what you want to do is to make sure that those advices, false advices uh, are buried into the sea of, of, of advices that we have. And then with our using DP, then you can ignore the malicious advices and then the output of the total output is is um, is good okay so so that's the uh, thing that we can we can use of course uh, current the, the the work that we have been doing uh, can only work on homogeneous agents so uh, there might be some you know in the real world uh, the agents can be heterogeneous, right? You have different states, different actions, um, different uh, type of um, proposals, and uh, definitely uh, the agents are homogeneous, or heterogeneous. And uh, our system currently couldn't work on this, haven't, uh, can't, can't work on this, uh, this heterogeneous agents, but we are working, uh, one of PhD students is working on this kind of um, extension. They, Different privacy can also be used in reinforced learning. That you take agents take advice from different places and then you use DP to adjust this learning results. This is similar to the previous ones. We applied to eliminate this, uh, this, those, uh, those uh, things. So the, right, the, the key issue is that when we learn from the other agents, other things, we apply DP in the learning, and then the output of that is guaranteed to be safe. So that's the main idea in the reinforcement learning. There are many directions that we can, we have been uh, uh, investigating and or some other people have been investigating like machine learning and deep learning, private, like private transfer learning, um, that's a deep in reinforcement uh, uh, learning, and uh, also meta learning, and uh, also in the uh, GAN networks. Uh, we also have one paper on that uh, just accepted in this particular area. And uh, we also uh, have this uh, multi-agent systems like advising system, transfer learning, uh, reasoning, that you can also use the different privacy to reduce a lot of the impact of malicious agents in here. So that's quite interesting. Uh, topics that uh, that uh, people can uh, uh, investigate. 
there's also um, combining this machine learning, deep learning, and the multi-agent uh, multi system together uh, to do a lot of quite interesting things as well. That uh, that that's uh, at communication cost. That's uh, um, this this sort of things. Um, looking at the coordinating of this um, behaviors of agents. Uh, it's a lot of areas that you can use uh, DP apply DP into these areas. Uh, that you can have some quite interesting results. So by conclusion, what I have been doing is very briefly to bring some new issues, new possibilities of security, privacy, or effectiveness of data into uh, the in AI that brings a lot of these issues. And uh, we see that through digital, digital privacy, uh, Put that into into this uh, AI mechanism, AI technologies. We can actually improve some of the problems, or tackle, or, or, or solve some of the problems that we raised before in security, in privacy, effectiveness of those uh, those problems in AI. So it can be a good tool uh, in, into these applications. But of course, there are some. Um, performance issues, some other issues that we need to consider uh, because there's never be a free lunch in any of the things, right? You, you add in something, you achieve something, you lose something, right? Just say, what can you do? But it's quite an interesting area because there's lots of mathematics in, in here and you can write a nice papers, reasoning, and uh, interesting topic to, to look at that. I have about uh, eight PhD students working in this area. Uh, in total areas, quite interesting topics. And we got a few uh, ARC grants, I think uh, three DPs in here and uh, about four or five this, uh, LPs in these areas in, in, to, to support this, this research. Thank you, uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Wang Lei. That was a superb talk. We really enjoyed it. Um, now it brings us to question time. And if anyone has any question, please put your hand up or give me some signal so I can unmute you. Uh, earlier, I think Abbas sent me a message that he wanted to ask a question. So over to you, Abbas, you can fire the first question. Thank you so much, Said. Oh, thank you so much for the great presentation, quite interesting. I have actually a couple of questions. So the first one is, what are the key side effects of differential privacy? What I'm losing by gaining this thing, you know, by applying DP to developing the models? And second, what is the relationship between differential privacy and AI explainability? We see that DP has promising features such as fairness, stability, and security. But what about AI explainability over there? Okay, yeah, let's look at the first one. Um, the first one is that uh, when you add in DP into the learning thing, obviously there are some impact to it. The uh, obvious impact is performance. When you add in some um, additional modules into the system, you have some negative impact to the performance. That's definitely in performance will be reduced. How much is reduction that in different topics, there are some different uh, reductions in the performance. We have already shown that in our papers, uh, in, that uh, in, in the beginning, I mentioned a number of these papers that uh, you probably can have a look of this, uh, uh, this particular part of this, this uh, how much reduction of performance that could uh, have. Uh, but uh, let's depend on the gain, uh, how much gain that you, you, you have, then, um, uh, then definitely you can, you, can, you, can, you can judge if you want to use it or not. Uh, it's definitely that because you can, you can achieve fairness, you can achieve this uh, sort of uh, 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 properties as I mentioned before, that's uh, security, stability, the sort of things that uh, you can achieve there, um, you obviously can judge if you want to use DP in there or not. So that's the thing. 
Second question is about the explainability of uh, AI. Um, I guess to answer the question, you also need to link the uh, these properties, DP properties, with this uh, this uh, uh, the goals of explainability of AI. So there are some of the things that we can use uh, in there. Things like fairness, the sort of things, uh, privacy. Uh, you can uh, use it to give people some kind of uh, uh, guarantees uh, that that the, the the AI that we used can guarantee some certain properties that people are concerned. For example, privacy uh, of machine learning. Right, we we use private machine learning to guarantee the privacy of individuals. Even we have learned a lot of this benefits that that can benefit everybody in the society, but the privacy of individuals can be kept untouched. So that's sort of that that sort of things that we can we can see the machine learning can be sort of expandable machine learning because of the privacies are are guaranteed through this because DP the one one of the good property of DP is that you can mathematically prove it is correct, right? And you can't do it in any other privacy uh, method. Uh, that's you can't prove it mathematically, but DP you can. So you can assure people that I can prove it mathematically that correct, that privacy is kept within this kind of boundaries. Then you can explain to people that um, this AI me mechanism I use with DP is good. So the sort of things that you can use. Thank you, Wally. Our next question, uh, uh, Leo, please. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you, Professor Zhou. Uh, it's very impressive, and uh, uh, I, I I got uh, like I don't know whether it's technique uh, regarding the application of DP for AI systems or especially for deep learning. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, regarding the uh, member inference attack, I, I saw lots of attacks papers published recently. Released recently, they say that. Uh, uh, Accurate DP cannot uh, successfully defend this kind of attacks. It's because that uh, the the assumption of DP is that uh, the data should be IID. But you know that our training data is definitely highly correlated. I, I and almost I mean I, I if from the perceptive point of view they are they are identical. They're the same. So when using DP to do this kind of defense, and then uh, there are lots of schemes t uh, that are shown to be fail because they do doesn't satisfy the application scenario. So I don't know whether you have, I mean, have some considerations regarding, I mean, how to make it, I don't know, it's also related to the definition of DP because the DP is, as, as you said, is, is, is theoretically proved, is very strict. And then uh, when using it in real life is, is a so strong definition and then it's actually constrained. For example, in, in, in deep learning, the data is always correlated. You, you can, yeah, you can, we can only learn repeated pattern. Yeah, and if it's the IID or, or totally random, and then, so, so, so do you have some like uh, 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 future trends uh, on these kind of problems, how to make DP more uh, re realistic for, for all these kind of problems? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, this is quite interesting. This is a very interesting um, topic of that, uh, the correlations of, of data sets in, in, in training. Um, we actually published a paper in TIFFS, uh, Transaction Information in the Forensic uh, 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 Security, uh, in, the, uh, in 2015. And uh, that's specifically working on this area of uh, correlation of data and using uh, DP in the uh, correlation of data. What we did is to transfer this correlation, the, the data, the correlated data into independent one uh, through different mechanisms, which was very uh, manageable loss functions that then you feed that data, process data into the machine learning models. So what you need to do is to, you can't use the raw data and the feed into the machine learning model. You use some kind of transformed data that with the mechanism that we, 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 we mentioned, uh, in, in that paper to actually work on that transform the data into feed that data into the machine learning model, then you can achieve this sort of thing. Um, 
that that of course there are some issues when you do the transformation because there's some of the information could be lost and uh, then you have to adjust your parameters to make sure that which part of information I can lose, which part of information I can't, then, then there's a number of the issues to, 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 to judge, to the decisions to make when you do this transformation of data uh, from, 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 from the original data set to the data set that you can satisfy DP. So there are some, some methodologies that you can use, uh, but not 100% uh, guaranteed. Of course, some of the data you can't avoid that they always linked together, together and then you have to use that uh, correlation in your learning, obviously, then, then there's probably can't be used, uh, in DP can't be applied to it, obviously. Thank you very much. Th th thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the virtual hand can go up, then I know who is asking next question. Uh, Abbas again, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have one more question. Go ahead. Uh, for this DP, let's assume that I want to have a model, a classification model that its accuracy is 95%. And that's a kind of hard constraint. If the model accuracy is not like that, I can't deploy this model in real world. Can DP address this hard constraint or is not flexible? It's only caring about security and stability, those type of things. Not, it doesn't care about the model accuracy. And if it doesn't care, do I have any knob over there to play with it until I maximize the accuracy of the model, you know, doing some kind of optimization over there, of course, within the boundaries of all of the constraints of DP? Yes, quite interesting thing. Uh, DP has two properties that you can, or parameters that you need to observe when you want to apply it into any ap applications. One is so-called privacy budget, that's epsilon. Uh, that, that's epsilon is the one. Uh, another is sensi uh, sensi sensitivity uh, that you want to apply for. Um, that's, uh, that's to the, uh, how this, what sort of uh, difference uh, you, you want to hide. So this sort of things, when you, when you have a hard target of, for example, as you mentioned, 95% of what, what, what accuracy or thing, then you have to, maybe you have to reduce the privacy budget that to have very limited uh, boundary or interval of that uh, output. That means you have the number of queries into the data set is very limited number of things that you can do in these things are limited. A number of times that you can use for what is limited. So you have to sacrifice some of this performance of your or criteria of, of performance of your, um, your different privacy uh, mechanisms to satisfy those hard target that you want to achieve. For example, after a certain time, you have to redo another DP mechanism, another one, and uh, then, then you re redo it. Then after you, because the budget is small, so after a certain number of queries, you have to redo another one. After a certain number of queries, you redo another one. Otherwise, you, you, you can't meet the DP's uh, definition. So that means you will have a lot of additional work to remodel your privacy, the DP, every, every you know, small intervals. That's the sacrifice you have to do. Thank you. Our next question is from Molu. Hello. Yep. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I just have two questions. First of all, in reality, as far as I know, most of cases we are facing with heterogeneous agents uh, rather than um, uh, homogeneous one. So I previously worked on uh, such a system for machine learning and uh, I found that uh, in most of cases in reality, we are facing that, that uh, most of cases are not homogeneous. So uh, I was wondering how you could consider some cases as a, as a homogeneous, not heterogeneous 
this is uh, my first question. And second one, it was about uh, uh, your, you know, uh, PD, which is like, I was uh, thinking about uh, like um, decision-based uh, theories, like info gaps, that you want to be sure about that your uh, for stability of your models, that how you uh, decision uh, decision based theories can help you to be to find out the best decision that how you are sure about uh, uh, keeping the privacy and uh, information that will, will not be changed during the process. So how you use uh, such a like info gap decision theory in your uh, model? Is it possible to use such a theories or not? Thank you. Okay, um, the first question is about this, um, um, the, the, um, is about this, uh, this um, multi-agent systems, right? Uh, yes. the, the, um, currently, what we have been doing is to only work on homogeneous uh, agents, um, and then instead of using the heterogeneous agents, the, the reason is that you can easily, um, you can easily form this, those uh, those uh, DP mechanism in the in this this uh, because every record is almost the same, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because in 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 here is almost re record has all this uh, um, the each record has all these uh, properties. The columns is the same. If we look at, if we view that as a, a, a two dimensional records in this uh, in this database. Then that's uh, that's each record has all this information in each of those columns. However, if we are working on the <coughs> homogeneous uh, heterogeneous system, that means we can define. We, we currently, you can you can define a um, database that with some kind of uh, um, matrix that not every column is filled. Some some agents have this field. Uh, field some with other field fields so this uh, this kind of metric is not not full so you have lots of uh, those unfilled fields then that means you have this sort of um, agents uh, that are different ho homogeneous uh, so if you can uh, more this is what we do to model that database as homogeneous records in, instead of hom, uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, heterogeneous records instead of homogeneous records by missing some of the fields, then you probably can achieve it. But um, um, I haven't, we haven't actually uh, done any of this research. This is a real deep research. This is just idea. So we're doing some simulations, doing some kind of uh, analytics uh, hopefully that we can we can we can achieve the results, but we haven't done that yet. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is the second question? Again, the, the, the second question it was about the um, uh, you know the stability part of DP that yeah. you were mentioned about uh, uh, that uh, you want to be sure about uh, that that during process that decision cannot be changed and you want to make it that you want to be sure about the. Uh, uh, unchanged a situation of that. So how about that? Because this is an uncertain way to make a decision, right? So mm. you are not sure about, and it's a like probabilistic model. So how about non-probabilistic or non, um, I mean, some other models, non-probabilistic decision theories like info gaps that can be used to help you to deal with such a situations? Yeah, I guess there's a the different privacy has limit. Uh, okay. Because different, as I mentioned before, different privacy can only can only deal with queries, right? You mm -hmm. query our database or data sets, then then you get the output, and the output is different. That's the that's the thing. And then there are only two ways that you can have the uh, have the models. Uh, that's a Laplace. That's that's a, for numerical numerical outputs or non numerical outputs that you can use. So there are some limitations for DPs. Not everything you can use uh, uh, in, in applications. Some are errors that you can't uh, because of the limitation of DP. Uh, so so um, maybe some, some errors that you, you shouldn't use DP <laughs> in there. Uh, but we, what we want to do is that we probably can use it to test it. Uh, some errors that you may be able to use it uh, and uh, maybe use it for um, good uh, output or good results, maybe some 
areas of use, probably fair output that you probably don't want to use it. So, so that, uh, that uh, I can't, uh, this definitely, you can't not use it for everything uh, as we wish to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are almost on dot 12 o'clock. And uh, uh, Professor Wanagao, thank you for your superb presentation. It was an eye opener for us and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, the whole of this session has been recorded and then we will put it on the server for anyone who would like to access later. And thank you again and thank you everyone for your attendance. Thank you. See you. Thank you.